Iron Harvest is an alternative take on the history of the 1920s. Taking inspiration from this time of industrial change, Iron Harvest's fictional states and characters find themselves in the aftermath of the Great War. Huge diesel-fueled machines invented to serve humanity have only lifted warfare to another level, and mankind has had to realize that the war that was supposed to end all wars has ended nothing. Polania is an agricultural state, far from being a military superpower. It found itself invaded by the massive military forces of its neighbors, Saxony and Rusviet. Occupied by both, the Polanian government settled for an unfavorable armistice, leaving its population nearly defenseless. The Polanian people, however, are far from giving up the fight for their homeland. On the brink of defeat, a growing resistance was just waiting for the right hero to lead them to victory. The Polanian rebels are split into several resistance cells and are fighting an unconventional war against the heavily armed forces occupying their homelands. This leads to very special troop characteristics. The Polanian mech lineup shows significant differences compared to the enemy troops. Having neither the technology to equip them with superior weaponry, nor the necessary resources to give them heavy armor, the Polanian troops specialize in speed when entering the battlefield. With its long legs and relatively light frame, the PZM-7 Smiley is one of the quickest mechs in the game. Whilst reconnaissance is the first and foremost aspect of this unit, it is equipped with a high-range cannon, perfect for taking out damaged enemy units from afar. If the Smiley finds himself in the undesirable situation of close combat, the engineers have equipped him with one last resort, a huge bayonet. By putting himself at high risk, the Smiley is capable of inflicting heavy damage with a high-speed ram attack. Staying within the mindset of building a lightweight, quick meat grinder, we'll take a look at the PZM-9 Strasnik next. Being mocked by enemy forces as a walking trash can, their laughter stuck in their throats when its two massive side-mounted double-barrel machine guns open fire. Being able to move and fire at the same time makes the Strasnik the predestined anti-infantry weapon of the Polanian army. Its bullet storm ability increases the mech's fire rate and showers nearby enemies with deadly projectiles. A high risk, high reward maneuver because after this massive attack, the heavy MGs need a few seconds to cool down. Unmatched in its unique combination of speed and heavy armor is the latest stroke of genius of the Polanian engineers, the PZM-16 South. This troop carrier does not sacrifice speed to vulnerability and is as fast moving backwards as it is forwards. The infantry it is carrying makes it a powerhouse against enemy infantry or armored units. Equipped with a roof-mounted 360-degree mortar, it inflicts damage on a wide radius around it. Even more so when it switches to stationary mode and boosts its defenses and combat strength. But sometimes it's not the heavy stomping, devastating, raw power of a war machine that's the right man for the job. They call her the Polanian Joan of Arc, Anna a young Polanian freedom fighter. On the battlefield, she can be both scalpel and broadsword. With her long-range sniper rifle, she can take out enemy infantry units one by one, or as a group, using piercing ammo. If the enemy soldiers get too close, her pet bear, Wojtek, will rip them apart. The situation is bad and is about to get even worse for the Polanian people. The Polanian resistance is fighting a more and more hopeless fight. Their only hope is peace. But there are hidden powers trying to refuel the conflict and reignite the war.